Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about how my comic book collection, I think, is around worth half of what I paid for it. This video was inspired by uh, somebody that left a comment on my video about my entire CGC key comic collection video and they were suggesting that I make a video and go through every single one of my keys of what I paid for it and what it's worth now. I'm not going to do this because one, I'm already neurotic enough about what I've paid for things and what they're worth and two, that's just a hell of a lot of work. But on average, I would say that a majority of my books are worth less than what I paid for them and in a lot of circumstances, they're worth half as much as what I've paid. I'm going to go through some of the examples of some books that are worth significantly less than what I paid for them, but there's a few takeaways from this that I kind of want to just talk about right off the bat. And that is, a lot of us, and I know me, I learn by from the school of hard knocks. Uh, as far as, you know, in my career and especially in this comic book collecting game, you know, you can't tell me nothing until it actually happens to me. I've had a lot of advice uh, from a lot of different people, you know, don't do this, do, do this, you know, and I, I, I didn't take that advice and I made some mistakes. And really the only way that you'll learn or really uh, that it affects you is if it hits you where it hurts and usually that's your wallet. Now, I've already sold a lot of things in my collection. Um, that have, I think, taken, that I, I just wanted to get out of it now, um, specifically a few runs that I hadn't completed, and then some modern books and some modern keys, and you know some super modern books, specifically ones that had been graded. I've gotten out of those, you know, took my hit, took my loss, and then moved away. A lot of the, the damage that I've taken financially in this game has been from grading books that I shouldn't have graded and grading those books and them coming back in grades um, lower than I expected. A lot of these super modern books, if they're not 9.8s, if they hit a 9.6, you know, they are, they are worthless to a lot of collectors. So some examples of some books that I've lost my butt on are, the first example is my Hulk 181. Um, I have a Hulk 181 in a 4.0. I paid $4,200 for that book. Um, I bought that book at a show at a Charlotte Comic Con. I think that book is roughly worth $2,500 now, maybe less. It was a huge, huge hit. For $4,100 or $4,200 now, you could realistically get something over a 6, a 6.5 in 2023, in July 2023. You know it was bad when I went to Heroes Con, saw the dealer that sold me the book. He remembered how much I paid for that book. And uh, yeah, when they when they remember how much they, they took you for, that's a bad day. It's not all bad with that. I still have a great book that I love in the collection. And also, it kind of set me up down the road with this guy um, to get other books that I got for a really, really good deal. Another book or set of books that I took a huge hit on is the Kang speculation with the Avengers book and then the Fantastic Four book, Fantastic Four 19, uh, first Rama Tut. This is something that I've harped on on the video. I've beat, beat this horse to death. This comic, this speculation, this MCU speculation, this is not where you want to be. This is not how you want to be collecting. If those are books that you want, be patient. Don't follow the trend. Wait until the movie's been released. Wait until it's been a flop or whatever the case may be. Even if the movie is well received, a lot of times the book still crashes in value. Just wait. Don't buy in. Uh, before thinking that you're going to buy into a piece of this character and it's going to explode. It's not. You're buying it at the worst possible time. Another few other books that I've lost my butt on are a couple runs, specifically my Thor uh, God of Thunder. Now, this run turned out to be probably one of the best superhero comic books I've ever read, best, best comic book runs I've ever read. 
and it's definitely my favorite Thor run. But I bought this run on eBay um, for around $550. It may have been $600 shipped. This book did include the uh, Thor number one, the Jane Foster cover. But this run is worth maybe $200 now, maybe $250. Um, it's probably one of the biggest hits I've taken and completely due to the movie, completely due to a failure of and, and, and just a general consensus of people hating uh, Thor Love and Thunder. And it's just a real shame because it's a, it's a run that is excellent, but because the movie was not well received, it it's not worth even anywhere close to what I paid. I bought that at the completely wrong time. Other examples of this are my uh, my Immortal Hulk run. I bought a huge chunk of that all together and then I picked up issues week by week by week. And that kind of goes tangentially into you know what uh, the next thing I've lost a crazy amount of money on is is all my super modern books, um, books that I bought off the shelves for four dollars, five dollars here. I stopped doing this. Um, let's see, it's been a year and a half, maybe it's going on two years ago now that I stopped buying books off the shelf, and it's just saved me so much money. And um, you know, I, some of those stories I still want to read, which I'll read them collect in collected editions, but. To buy these books off the shelves, one of the biggest examples is uh, my Suicide Squad run from DC. That run is near worthless, and and you know if I look at how much I spent, just fifty dollars, sixty dollars, I doubt I could get a dollar for this run on eBay or other sites. It's just, it's kind of sickening to think that. You spent that kind of money on a run, you know, thinking that at least would hold its value. I mean, after you read it and kept it in good condition and, and, and collected it, you would think that it would at least hold some value, but these books don't. You buy a book one week, and I've talked to a, a shop owner. If he does not sell these books the week they come out, the next week they're next to worthless. Other runs that I have bought or piecing a run together from local comic shops has been uh, really uh, bad financially. Um, and buying runs or buying books from runs that are very common, specifically my New Mutants, X Factor, Iron Man, and Green Lantern runs. You know, these are runs that are well known but they are runs that are extremely common extremely high printed a few keys in these runs and the keys are not even extremely valuable in the new mutants i'm talking about the early new mutants run you know you, you've got the first appearance of like the demon bear and stuff and uh karma and i, I think Maybe Magic. I can't remember if Magic's first appearance is in there or not. But these are books that are not crazy valuable. But I pieced those runs together buying books $4, $5 from these comic shops. And I've lost my butt on those. I've sold a lot of that. But I, I lost half, if not more, of my money from those collecting those runs. Another huge example I've talked about is my Darth Vader number three, first appearance of Dr. Aphra in a 9.8, a book I could care less about in the collection. Um, I've had multiple people reach out to me after I talked about this book before trying to buy this, but it's just like I spent $500 on that book, and um, I would be lucky to get $250 now. I mean, I'm in a situation where... I just I'm just keeping the book. One, I mean, I don't I don't care about the book, but I just can't. I, I I mean, I just have to wait. I just have to hold hold on to it, and that kind of spirals into another thing of some of the books that I've held and not sold at the right time. I take those I take those as a loss as well. In my ultimate Fallout Four, the first nine point eight CGC book that I ever had personally graded. 
um, that I got a 9.8 on, you know, that book was worth three grand, if not more. Um, and I held on to it, held on to it, and it's selling for $1,600, $1,700 on Instagram now. To me, that's losing half. Obviously, I only have like $250 into that book, so I'm still doing very well. But it's a situation where I take that as a loss because it's a it's a what it's a what if. If I had sold that, I could have bought something and I really wanted something, a major, major key, a silver age book, something that really holds its value, a true grail comic for that kind of money. Another thing that I've lost quite a bit on is my omnibus. Now, I've gotten a lot of good entertainment and I've enjoyed these a lot. I I take I take all the books out of the the cellophane. I buy 99% of my Omnibus brand new. I take them out of the cellophane because they just don't look good on the shelf and I don't want to see the cellophane on the books. As soon as I take that off of there, you can decrease the value of that book by, you know, 25-30%. And a lot of these a lot of these books, you know, um some of them go out of print, but a lot of them just don't. They continually get reprinted, and when that happens, it just completely decreases the value. Another issue, uh, I've bought a few Omnibus that have been out of print, only to have them reprinted later. And uh, so when I buy them for their higher price when they're out of print, only to find that several months later, a year later, they get reprinted, you're talking about losing over half of what you put into it in that beginning because you wanted to buy it because it was out of print and you you couldn't find it. Something I've done pretty well on um, is buying collections. I would say most, if not all, the collections I've bought, I've made money on or I've gotten some things out of there that are worth more than what I paid for the collection. The problem is, is the bagging and boarding and the supplies, uh, the, the boxes, um, and the time to organize these things, categorize them, um, and store them correctly. The bags and boards, as you guys know, I mean, that is a serious investment. And you put that towards the, the cost of a collection. It's just like, did, did the collection you just buy for $500 just become a $1,000 investment because of the supplies that you put in? Yes. And if that collection is not worth, I mean, if that collection is not worth $500 or that collection is not worth $1,000, I mean, it's like you just lost your butt. You, you, you lost uh, the, the money on that collection. So basically, to wrap this up, put this uh, bow on this, um, you need to be collecting what you like. You need to be collecting um, patiently. You don't want to be following spec. You don't want to be following these channels that tell you what to buy, when to buy. You don't. You don't want to be going down that road. Um, you want to be getting things when they're cold, ice cold, right after the movie's been put out. Waiting, not buying the book in anticipation for the movie or the show or whatever. You want to be buying buying keys that are tried and true, old books that have true rarity, true scarcity with major first appearances, even in low grade. That's the kind of stuff you want to be collecting if you're wanting your, your collection to hold its value. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.